Well, today is mail day. I uh, ordered this on, uh, what's today, Friday? I ordered this on Wednesday. Why I waited, I wasn't going to order it. Because I really didn't want to spend the money. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've been going a little nuts lately. And if we're thinking about possibly getting another house, uh, I really shouldn't be going nuts like I have been. So I've been thinking about it. But then, what this is, this is for the radio that I just bought and put in the truck, which is the FT Foxtrot Tango 891. Now, I also put the Moto antenna, M-O-T-O antenna, on the roof. So, approximately, there's $1,000 there. I didn't want to take a chance of blowing up the radio <laughs> because I didn't want to spend another $350. Uh, so, as much as I didn't want to spend it, I was almost forced into it you know because if I don't you know I don't know what the hell you know I could possibly blow up the radio so I said yeah, I'm just gonna order now on some radios they have a built-in antenna tuner that's what this is it's an automatic antenna tuner the Yezu that's behind me the, the big FT Foxtrot Tango 1200 has a built-in antenna tuner if you're running through the 50 ohm side. If I was just going to run a wire off the back, I would have to buy another tuner for that reason. But for all intended purposes, everything I use it for has a 50 ohm match. So, the antenna tuner that's in that is fine. Now the FT, Foxtrot Tango, 891, I remember right I don't think it has an antenna tuner in it so this is an antenna tuner to fit that radio That's if I can get it out of the box now it's basically the same size the same footprint it's the same everything as far as physical size as uh, the radio so if I wanted to have it nice and neat and uh, somewhat uh, stacked you know like on a console or something it would be fine uh, however I'm not going to be doing that the radio is going to stay where it is and uh, I'm going to try to figure out how to get into the bag and this is going to be mounted, uh, depending on how much cable they give me, two or three feet away. Now there's really nothing that has to be done to this. There's no tuning, there's no knobs, there's no nothing basically. Um, you plug it in, you hook it up, you go to, you go what you do what you got to do. That's the mounts. So if I wanted to mount it to the radio, they would bolt on each side. This is the coax, the jumper that goes between here and the radio. Now this is where I was saying it would make a, a, a difference as to where I'm going to put it. Because if I use this, I'm restricted to that distance. Which is okay. Um, but this is the cable, because this I can make one. This one I can probably buy an extension. But this is where I'm basically stuck in between. So that looks to be maybe 2 feet, 18 inches. Uh, am I getting called? Let's just see if it has it. It looks like it's about 2 feet. But 
you got to figure the two ends, you know, I mean, I'm not going to be stretching it this way, so I'm going to have to worry about it this way. So the ends, I really can't count. So I'm looking at about a 17-inch cable. So that's where we're at. Now this screws into the, there it is. I just got called. There it is. So this screws into here, goes into the radio. The moto antenna screws into this. This plugs into this, this plugs into the radio, and then I have no worries. I mean, if the antenna is way out of whack, well then I, I can still have a problem, but as long as I keep good grounds on the antenna and the coil is good and I have no problems, this should take care of everything for me. Let me go. All right, I don't have to go just yet. It's only an automatic fire alarm at a Holiday Inn hotel. Now, what I figure that is, years ago, I don't want to say years ago, maybe 25 years ago or so, I ran the security for a hotel chain called Largo and they bought out a Howard Johnson's franchise. <coughs> and what they were doing was each, they had, they bought the whole chain. So they had from New Jersey to Maine. And what they had done was they let each manager hire a so-called security personnel uh, or start a security source of system of some sort. Uh, in each hotel which means there's no uniform you know uniformity and if the manager really doesn't know what's going on you know what I mean how is he going to give direction and write post orders and things for this security person that he hires now if he hires a security person a security guard or a security company, uh, which they didn't want security companies because the security company sometimes could be a pain in the ass. Um, but if they did, some of them did, <clears throat> they're kind of stuck listening to them because again, they know nothing as a manager of the hotel. They know nothing about security. So if they hire a in-house, meaning one that works for the hotel, a uh, security person, uh, he's kind of like either in the dark or the management is going to have to listen to everything he says or whatever he thinks he may know or he may know who knows well they were having a lot of problems because some of the chains are a little they're, they're in areas that aren't the best in the world uh, some of the chains are in good spots and some of them are even in spots to when they had Special Olympics and the carnival's going, and the president's flying in, uh, that these certain hotels were also used for a lot of that. So at that point, they decided to hire a person to run the security for the whole system. And guess who that was? <laughs> it was me. So at that point, my first thing was knowing and figuring out, because I've got the background, so that's not a problem. Uh, but again, I have to research each one so I can write post orders for each one, train the officers, regardless of how or what they've been doing, train them as to what I want them to do, which is basically what the company wants them to do. And no more of this free agent stuff, doing what I want to do, which most of the time was sleeping. If you work the night shift, you know, you go down to the window, you go down to the desk, you find a room that isn't uh, being booked, and you just take that room and go in there and enjoy yourself until you hear a call come over the radio. The front desk doesn't even know you're in that room because half the time they're not checking the keys. You know, if well, if I didn't check it into this person, it still has to be there. You follow? They don't look saying, okay, 
I got 10 checked in. There's 10 keys. Oh, wait a minute. I'm missing 11 keys. You follow me? They don't do these things, which you should. You know, somebody might have walked out with that key, which means that if you don't change the locks, they can come back in with that key. You know, so these are things you have to think about because that's what happens. So they hired me. Now, where I'm going with this is because when I was working a lot of these hotels, I would check them and work them at different hours because I wanted to see what the shifts were like on each uh, on each shift. I wanted to see what was going on, what wasn't, how things were handled, you know, and such. Well, the night shift, you know, I'll say from 10 o'clock, uh, you know, like uh, 2200 on through maybe 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, you'd end up getting a lot of uh, automatic alarms, uh, automatic fire alarms. Because a lot of the people that travel um, have their own little quirks. Some are religious, some are not. But what it is, is a lot of them like to burn incense. And they burn it near the door on the inside because it helps keep the evil away. All right? Um, and it keeps them safe. I mean, these are just their ways. You can't knock it for, you know, for them. But... What happens is it sets off the alarms in the room, you know, and they're sleeping, you know, so they <laughs> have no idea what's going on. You know, meanwhile, the hotel's being evacuated because somebody <laughs> decided to burn incense to keep the evil out of their bedroom. Um, and again, you know, you don't want to knock them for it because that's their belief, you know, and, and they're there to do what they got to do. However, uh, we started posting these things that, listen, if you're going to do any incense burning, it can't be right near the front door. It has to be a certain amount of distance from the automatic alarm thing, you know, and all this kind of stuff. Because, you know, put it at the at the, in the head night at the nightstand on the side of the table or something, you know, but not where you're going to knock it over, you know. Uh, it even got to a point to where some of the hotels started having little... Um, inset holders and things for them to put it in in a certain spot you know and either you, you put it there you don't light it you know um, but that's what a lot of these automatic alarms are when you see hotels it's either somebody in the kitchen is burning <laughs> or somebody's right lighting an incense in the room uh, to keep the uh, the evil spirits away so so apparently see no more calls so that was a false alarm that was something I don't want to say stupid, but it's stupid. So, but meanwhile, <clears throat> I don't even know what time it is. I've been going most of the day. What time is it anyway? Oh, geez, it's three o'clock in the afternoon already. Oof. This morning I had to get up and I had to go to the gun club for a minute. Uh, I had to drop something off. Then I stopped off at uh, the hornet's nest and uh, had something light to eat. And then, um, then I had to go to uh, Stop and Shop, which is a food chain around here in Connecticut, um, and pick up uh, about 40 pounds of chicken breast, boneless, skinless chicken breast, uh, for the boys. Um, the wife will pick up the rest of it tomorrow. I just wanted to get enough to get through today anyway. But anyway... Um, Time has gone by, and you know what? I'm wondering why I'm exhausted because I've been going nuts all day. I've been building the, the the enclosure for the generator out there. I got the top hinged and on. I found the hinges, by the way. Guess where they were? In this big plastic box that has marked on it hinges. <laughs> big red plastic bin. All right. Um, so anyway, I got the top on and hinged. Uh, I got the side up. I got the firewall up behind it because it's up next to the house. It's not against the house. It's about, oh, I don't know, maybe three, four inches away. So I wanted to make sure I put a fireboard behind it, between it and the house. Um, just in case it got a little warmer, I want to make sure of that. But there's a lot of air movement between there, so I don't have to worry about it too much. But I'd rather be safe. So I got that up. Uh, I got the solar panel hooked up and charging because, again, that's the one I put the motorcycle battery on. 
and I used the motorcycle battery because they're used to vibration. Uh, I built a battery box for it. I think I showed you. If you go back a year or two, you'll see it. Generator. Um, Generac, or I don't know what I even labeled it as. But uh, because the generator doesn't charge when it's running, uh, you know, there's really no way of charging that battery other than the little transformer trickle charger that it used to come with to charge up a little bitty battery that it used to have, you know, that, that, that didn't last over a year for me. So I put the motorcycle battery on there and uh, I hooked up a uh, 35 watt solar panel with a uh, controller charger on it and tie that into the battery so that keeps the battery, the motorcycle battery, uh, right up to snuff for me at all times. So I got that all hooked up. So now all I just got to do is uh, put the side on it and I want to put a hinged uh, front on it. Uh, just in case I got to pull it out, I can just open it up and pull it out. So uh, that's where I'm at with that. So I'll finish that tomorrow. I'll put this in tomorrow. I'm getting tired. I'm going to go in. I'm going to call it a day. And I'm going to load up all these videos on here and uh, bore the crap out of you guys. Um, so beware and uh, watch if you want. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. You know, so uh, have a good weekend, guys.